Thank you very much for the kind introdu introduction. And uh, I'll be very honored to be speaking here. And many speakers talked about the current situation and different, uh, the, the advancement. But this talk is just going back about 20 years uh, and you know, just summarize what NMR became, uh, how NMR became the QNMR. So I'd like to uh, talk about the background a little bit, uh, challenges of how the QNMR have compared to the NMR, and summary of that. Uh, NMR uh, has like about 70 years of history and have been known that has the quantitative analysis to, uh, can be analyzed quantitatively. And NMR has like a, uh, but uh, NMR has been used mostly for the uh, structural determination, uh, uh, characterization. Since uh, NMR has like, for example, this is the one of the pesticides, etofenprox, uh, have the structure uh, specific resonance, like a uh, benzene ring has resonate around 7.0 ppm, uh, was the methyl peak uh, resonating around 1.2 ppm, so on and so forth. Uh, so you can use that chemical shift to see the, what kind of functional group. And at the meantime, you can use the uh, how many protons are in that region, so that you can confirm by the chemical shift as well as the number of protons uh, in that region. However, uh, the simple NMR used to be just confirm the proton ratio within the molecule. So you don't have to compare one molecule to the other. So most of the people do not appreciate or even do not do the, uh, the weighing of the sample since it is not necessary that much. And people do believe that even 10% of off from, for example, methyl peaks, three peaks, to the five peaks of benzene ring, 10% uh, off is not that much of the uh, problem of the structural elucidation. But NMR has the the area of the signal is known to be proportional to the number of nuclei resonating with signal. So the old days of the NMR, most of the NMR users had not required, as I said, accurate sample weighing. NMR requires less than one milliliter of sample solution and uses filtrated solvent, well, rather expensive solvent, so usually use the very small amount of sample preparation. Signal averaging is important because the animal is rather low sensitivity spectrum. And good signal to uh, signal shape is required in order to see the differences between the uh, chemical shift or coupling uh, splitting patterns. So quantitative analysis using an MR because of uh, probably there are several reasons, but was not recognized as the accurate method for a long time. But we really want to uh, have some kind of system that uh, you know, break the, uh, the conventional calibration system. In chemistry, if you want to calibrate one material, uh, this one, you need higher reference of the same material. That's the most of the thing you have to do that. And if you have the regulation, you have to set some kind of reference, then many reference is necessary in order to set the regulation. And however, unfortunately, no, unfortunately, we cannot set all the reference by making just uh, CRM production uh, at the national level, for example. So we want to have some kind of system that can be transferred one molecule 
to the other molecule on the quantitative SI traceable matter. So the quantitative NMR, QNMR, the good point is quantitative response based on the number of resonating nuclei, as I said, so that reference standard having different structure can be used to assigned value, for example, purity. Required solvent and sample amount is low, while drawback is weighing process is a bit difficult, but very green. Uh, uh, the amount of consumption is low, so it's fine. And the measurement itself is destructive method, so you can measure as many as possible as long as the sample arrives. And limitation is the chemical shift dispersion is limited, so not like chromatographic technique, you cannot expand the overlapping resonances by the time dimension. Usually use deuterate solvents, a little bit expensive, and the dynamic range is limited because, uh, well, NMR, you cannot overflow the system, uh, so you have to set, adjust the signal intensity based on the highest intense signal. So the NMR uh, has, to be, has been used for the structural determination, but if you put another sample in it and do the measurement with the accurate integration, you can compare this 18 protons from the three, uh, two tertiary butyl uh, group to, for example, these three methyl groups or the, these two, no, one to three all methane groups, or the 13 protons from the benzene ring. So you can compare number of protons originating from this molecule versus number of protons originating from this molecules with a scale of number of protons, which is proportional to the number of molecule. And the problem in here is first of all, you have to weigh accurately with this molecule and that molecule. And again, uh, NMR requires only slight, uh, very small amount of uh, sample, so it is not that easy at the beginning. And also, uh, this is slightly small, but this uh, magnetization uh, which is proportional to the number of nucleus, uh, is uh, depending on the TI, uh, T T1, I'm sorry, that's the longitudinal uh, relaxation uh, time of the proton. And you have to make that long delay in order to make that MTI constant for all protons. So from, with this kind of uh, equation, you can get this very simple equation to get the signal uh, intensity and number of protons and molecular mass and the amount of sample weight and one purity transfer to the other purity. So now we can compare two different molecules, assign uh, transfer purity of one molecule to the other molecule. So is the QNMR simple? Yes, it is. But there are lots of challenges in order to get the QNMR matured and you know, robust. Now, everybody is intended to use QNMR since it is easy, quick, or rather accurate. But uh, we have lots of problems we have to uh, overcome. So this is, again, the equation for the uh, integration of signal, and which is proportional to the number of uh, nuclei and concentration, and also parameter of the T1 uh, relaxation delay. So in order to get the accurate standard uh, purity from one to the other, you need the accurate mass again, 
and accurate signal intensities area, and CRM certified for the chemical purity. I'm not going to go into this uh, CRM certified for the chemical purity since uh, BIPM has the ISRD, uh, internal standard reference data uh, published, and it has lots of information for in here, in there, so I'd rather uh, not to touch here at this moment. But I'm just going through the uh, quickly with the accurate sample mass program and the signal area program uh, from now on. Since uh, the QNMR started, uh, people do not appreciate the mass is the very, very important factor. Uh, I'd like to just briefly uh, go through the how that uh, people uh, appreciate the, the diff, uh, inference of the mass. Uh, this is like comparison of three kinds of uh, balances semi-micro, uh, which can measure to the uh, hundreds of uh, milligrams, and microbalance, uh, thousands of the milligrams, and ultra-micro, ten thousands of milligrams. So each has the different digit, and repeatability of the standard deviation is getting uh, smaller and smaller. And if you take a look at the relative standard deviation, of course it's getting smaller and smaller. And people tend to think of, for example, aluminum pound, about 25 milligrams. Uh, this repeatability is good. But if you are thinking of put one milligram of sample on that aluminum pound, relative standard deviation for one milligram on the aluminum pan is rather big compared to the actual repeatability. So it's kind of trick, but the people didn't uh, understand for a long time how that effect going to. And QNMR, you have to weigh twice, one for the analyte, one for well, sample, and one for the internal standard. So this effect is pretty big. So the challenge in the QNMR, uh, accurate uh, shim, uh, sufficient good signal to noise, uh, proper spectral and filter width. Uh, that show the spectral pattern. Uh, this is a well shim spectrum, but uh, if the shim is not good, look like this, uh, the line is getting really broad and the integration is really hard. And of course, if the signal to noise is not good, then you get more noise and getting the poor uh, repeatability. And the other things, the filter, uh, people do not appreciate that much, but this is coming from the instrument. And if you take a look at the changing the uh, offset of spectrum and to plot the integration, uh, normalized integration from the offset of proton, uh, offset uh, differences between offset and resonance point. Uh, if you are using a good filter, you can just see the deviation uh, among the chemical shift. But if the filter is not good, then you have some kind of tendency towards the chemical shift. That, uh, in this case, this. Uh, here is 0.002, that's 0.2% of the signal intensity, and that becomes really, really big bias factor. And data truncation may have some kind of you know, wiggle that makes that increasing the uh, signal uh, repeatability bad. And furthermore, the TL repeat, uh, relaxation delay versus the T1 uh, longitudinal uh, relaxation time. If you suppose there are three kinds of uh, relaxation time uh, protons, and 
if you happen to measure four second repeatability uh, relaxation delay, you lose like 0.8 percent. Uh, you you just gain 0.8 percent of the signal. So it's biased, and since this is the ratio uh, method, you may happen to have the same kind of uh, relaxation time. That's fine, but if you want an accurate uh, measurement, you have to think of the how much of the relaxation delay you have to uh, wait. Uh, if you have like 99%, uh, you have to have the seven times of the longest T1. And if you want almost 100%, then 10 times of T1 is required. So it's a really, really slow process, and which was not done by the most of the Q, uh, NMR uh, people. So the meteorological traceability, we need one good uh, thing, uh, CRM, which is traceable to reference, uh, stated reference through the SI, I mean, uh, through the uh, primary method. And conventional method, then you have to have the same proton, uh, same uh, compounds, but using the car, uh, proton NMR, Q, Q, I'm sorry, QNMR, uh, you have the different kind of molecule and different kinds of the substances. And now you can uh, expand the kinds of uh, selection of molecules, and you can prepare standard solution with the, uh, these kinds of molecules and the measurement up uh, below the system is getting more, uh, more and more accurate and reliable. Since the, uh, about 20 years ago, the QNML uh, publication is getting higher and higher. And last year, uh, almost 350 publications from the uh, uh, Google search was found. And the system is expanding from the one component to multi-component and also combine chromatography and solid state NMR, so it's expanding a lot. And CCQM comparison, uh, believe it or not, in 1998, we have the CCQM P3 comparison and P35. But since then, long time, <coughs> NMR was forgotten from this community and 2009, we have the CCQM uh, symposium uh, in OAWG, and since then, the number of participants are increased. Okay, I'll conclude. Uh, uh, QNMR was summarized. The time QNMR started appear about 20 years ago, and QNMR has developed uh, rapidly, and its importance is recognized has already been recognized as an important quantitative tool for organic compounds. QNM has, has expanded its application in many fields and uncertainty factors, and the estimations has to be discussed and improved a little more in order to get more mature. But uh, we believe the important, uh, potential of QNMR is immeasurable. We are expecting further development of QNMR. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.